Welcome to WEBN Sports. I'm Max Lasky. And I'm Sergio Nogueira. Let's get into tonight's top stories. Tyson Bajan got his first win in as many starts for the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields was silent with a dislocated thumb, and most people wrote the Bears off. But the 23-year-old rookie did just enough to secure a 30-12 win versus Los Angeles Raiders. The D2 undrafted free agent completed 21 out of his 27 passes for 160 yards and a touchdown. With games against the Chargers, Saints and Panthers coming up, Bajan's performance offers a bit of much-needed hope to Bears fans. The New England Patriots upset the Buffalo Bills 29-25 in dramatic fashion on Sunday. The win comes just days after it was leaked that the Pats quietly signed head coach Bill Belichick to a contract extension. Many had thought that Belichick could have been on his way out of New England due to the Patriots' 1-5 start to the season. But with the big win on Sunday against the Bills Mafia, Belichick and Patriots quarterback Mac Jones don't seem to be going anywhere just yet. Looking to bounce back after their first loss of the season, the 49ers got some more bad news. On Saturday, head coach Cal Shanahan announced that All-Pro wide receiver Debo Samuel would miss weeks 7 and 8 with a hairline fracture. Shanahan said the te initial test showed nothing. However, after Samuel continued to feel pain, a CT scan revealed their fracture in his shoulder. Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle will look to fill his gap better than they did Monday night at Minnesota. Samuel will be re-evaluated after San Francisco's bye in Week 9. On Sunday night football, the Philadelphia Eagles bested the Miami Dolphins 31-17. This was the first NFL meeting between former college teammates Jalen Hurts and Tua Tagovailoa, and they did not disappoint. Hurts was on the money, throwing for 279 yards, another 21 on the ground, and found the end zone three different times. Miami put up a valiant effort, but it was Philly Philly's defense and their tush push that was able to get the job done. The Birds improved to an NFL best 6-1 on the season as the Finns fall to 5-2. Two of the best teams in the NFL faced off against each other on Sunday. Let's head to Philly for the breakdown. Dolphins, Eagles, Tua, Jalen, Alabama teammates, here we go. Jalen strikes first by connecting with tight end Dallas Goddard, finds the end zone. Again, Hurts looking to evade pressure, incredibly escapes to the right and throws on the run, finds his big body receiver A.J. Brown, who's just short. But the unstoppable touch push gives the Eagles a 14-point lead. Tua, looking to answer back before the half, launches it and finds Tyreek in the back of the end zone to cut the lead to seven. Second half action, Hurts passes deflected and ends up in Jerome Baker's hands, who takes it in to tie the game up. Late third quarter, Hurts looking to an answer, finds who else? A.J. Brown with the touchdown and the lead. Last chance for the Dolphins, Tua drops back, airs it out and intercepted by Darius Lay with a peek to seal the deal. Eagles 31, Finns 17. For more on the NFL, we head to our correspondent, Rico Brill. Sunday, October 22nd, was National Tight Ends Day, and the NFL saw the tight end position go off. Entering Sunday's action, there had only been two 100-yard games by tight ends this season. Despite the lack of production by the position so far this season, the tight ends came to play on their holiday. Travis Kelsey went off for 179 yards and a score. Mark Andrews had 63 yards and two touchdowns, and Darren Waller had 98 yards and his first touchdown of the season for the Giants. Patriots head coach Bill Belichick earned his 300th head coaching regular season win as the Patriots beat the Bills in dramatic fashion. The Patriots were off to the worst start in the, his 24 years as head coach, yet managed to beat the Bills, one of the top dogs of the AFC. Belichick becomes just the third head coach to reach the 300 win mark joining Don Shula and George Hallis. Including, including the playoffs, Belichick has 331 wins, which is 16 short of Shula's 347. Week 7 of the NFL regular season added more injuries to the massive list of injured players. Bijan Robinson was listed as an active prior to the Sunday's game against the Bucks. However, he was not feeling all that great, according to head coach Arthur Smith, leading, to him, leading him to miss most of the game. Cleveland Browns QB, Deshaun Watson, exited the game early due to concussion protocol and did not return. He was replaced by P.J. Walker. Other injuries from Week 7 include Eric Stokes, Kareem Jackson, Gerald Everett, and Trent Brown. Back to Max and Sergio at the desk. We're going to take a short break, but stay tuned for more WEBN.
Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. High blood pressure silently affects millions of Americans. Staying on top of your blood pressure is as simple as these four easy steps. Self-monitoring is power. Visit manageyourbp.org to learn more. Welcome back to WEBN Sports. The Boston Bruins are off to a red-hot start this season as they remain undefeated following their 3-1 victory over the Anaheim Ducks this past Sunday. 19-year-old Bruins upstart center Matt Patra helped propel the Bruins past the Ducks after scoring his first two NHL goals of his young career. The Bruins drafted Patra in the second round of the 2022 draft but didn't sign him to an entry-level contract until May of this year. Patra and the Bruins will look to continue their success as they head into a four-game homestand this week. Arizona Coyotes' Travis Dermott became the first NHL player to defy the league's new rule that bans pride tape during warm-ups and games this season. The defenseman wrapped the top of his stick with the rainbow color tape used to support the LGBTQIA community. In June, the NHL announced that the teams were no longer allowed to wear specialty jerseys or gear. The unilateral ban followed a season in which several players refused to take part in warm-ups when their teams wore Pride Night jerseys. The league has yet to announce any punishment for Dermott's use of Pride tape. Winnipeg Jets head coach Rick Bonus will be taking a leave of absence from his coaching duties. This comes after the news regarding Bonus's wife being in the hospital. This will be the first time since becoming head coach that Bonus will miss games for Winnipeg. Scott Arneal will be appointed as the team's interim coach, the team announced Sunday. In surprising fashion, Jake DeBrusque was a healthy scratch in the game against the Los Angeles Kings on Saturday night. DeBrusque was in skating at morning practice for which he was expected to start. But following the practice session, head coach Jim Montgomery revealed that the 27-year-old winger was late for a team meeting and as consequence would not be on the ice in L.A. Jake DeBrusque, who had played all three games for the Bruins this season, is in the final year of a two-year contract with a $4 million salary cap hit. Both DeBrusque and the Bruins have expressed their mutual interest in reaching an agreement on an extension. We now go to Emily Champagne for more on the NHL. Boston Bruins rookie Matt Petrus has had a strong start to his rookie season. On Sunday's game versus the Anaheim Ducks, Petrus scored two more goals, now having three goals in five games. These two goals helped the Bruins secure their fifth straight win as the Bruins beat the Ducks 3-1. The Bees now have a perfect record of 5-0. With a working geeky assist, Poitras' goal came in the third quarter within four minutes of play. This game has sparked Poitras' promising young career and we cannot wait to see more as the Bruins face the Blackhawks Tuesday night. Rookie sensation Connor Bedard scores in his first home game. In a heated match against the Golden Knights, Bedard's shot was able to sneak past the Knights goaltender Aiden Hill, making NHL history. This game marks Bedard's first goal at the United Center and makes him the fastest number one pick to score at a home opener. Bedard scored only 1 minute and 30 seconds into the first period. This season, Bedard has recorded two goals, two assists, and about 20 minutes of ice time throughout the six matches the Blackhawks have played. Bedard looks to continue his strong start tonight against the Boston Bruins. A heated battle has already begun for the top spot in the NHL's Atlantic Division. While it is too early to actually tell, the division is destined for another photo finish ending. The Toronto Maple Leafs, Boston Bruins, and Tampa Bay Lightning are three teams we have frequently seen in the postseason. There is no coasting allowed in this division, as throughout the past two weeks of play, there have been several stellar teams. The Boston Bruins remain unstoppable, the Red Wings are improving, and the Canadians are doing their best against injuries. All eight teams are heading into next week ready to win. That's all I have for the NHL. Back to you at the desk. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. More WEBN Sports coming up after this. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. 
Welcome back to WEBN Sports. The Phillies took on the Diamondbacks in Game 6 of the ALCS on Monday. Let's go to Citizens Bank Park for the recap. Phillies looking to move on to Game 6. Aaron Nola on the bump strikes out the first two this inning and in a bit of a jam here but gets uh, to escape the frame there, now in the top of the second, still scoreless before Tommy Pham sends that baby into orbit, giving the D-backs a 1-0 lead early. Then the very next at-bat, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. gets all of that one. D-backs go up 2-0. Bottom half of the inning, Trey Turner at the dish, 2-on-2 two two out, and Merrill Kelly is going to get Turner to strike out swinging. But let's fast forward to the top of the seventh. Tell Marte looking to bring in Perdomo, and he does with a little RBI base hit through the gap. Arizona goes up 5-1 to one and went on to win by that score. We now go to our MLB correspondent, Lucas Sims, for more on the MLB. On September 14th, the Red Sox announced that they had parted ways with their chief baseball officer, Heim Bloom. Bloom had been with the team since 2019. Their search for his replacement is still ongoing, and according to league sources, the Red Sox are currently informing first-round candidates on whether or not they've advanced to the next round of the interview process. A top candidate at the moment is the Cubs' assistant general manager, Craig Breslow. The Texas Rangers are headed to the World Series for the first time since 2011. Their 11-4 Game 7 victory on the road against the Astros secured their third AL pennant in franchise history. Each team won every single game that they played on the road. Adolis Garcia played out of his mind as he drove in 15 runs, hit five home runs while posting a 1.293 OPS during the series. His 15 RBIs are the most ever in a postseason series. It should come as no surprise that Garcia was named the ALCS MVP. The Rangers will host Game 1 of the World Series, which starts on Friday. The NLCS is headed to a decisive Game 7 in Philadelphia. The series has been back and forth to this point, with Philly taking the first two games, Arizona taking the next two, and each team splitting the last two games. Arizona took Game 6 5-1 after a strong start from Merrill Kelly, who went five innings pitched with eight strikeouts while only giving up one run. The Phillies will send out Ranger Suarez, and the Snakes will send out Brandon Fott. This will be a rematch of Game 3, which the D-backs won thanks to a walk-off single by Cattell Marte. First pitch is set for 8.07 p.m. tonight. Back to you at the desk. The second of the three Formula One Grand Prix to be held in the United States this year was hosted in Texas. The Austin Grand Prix took place at the Circuit of the Americas this past weekend. Despite qualifying six, season leader Max Verstappen fought through the grid and reached his 15th P1 finish for the season. His Red Bull counterpart and crowd favorite Checo Perez finished in a disappointing P4. Lana Norris and Carlos Sainz finished on the podium after Mercedes driver Lewis Hamilton had his second place finish erased. Both Hamilton and Ferrari's Charles Leclerc were disqualified for violating technical regulations. The only American on the grid, Logan Sargent, benefited from this being bumped from 12th to 10th and scoring his first ever point in a Williams. F1 will travel south to Mexico and Brazil in the coming weeks before returning to the U.S. to be hosted at the Las Vegas trip on November 19th. Professional wrestling icon Sting has officially announced his retirement match. The announcement came on AEW Dynamite last week, where Sting stated that, quote, My first AEW match took place at Revolution in 2021, and the final match of my career will take place at Revolution in 2024. Sting has graced our television screens for over four decades and will officially hang up the boots in March of next year. The question is, who will step up and challenge Sting in his final match? And if you asked me, I'd say Darby Allen will be the one to end the sensational career of Sting. Switching over to college football, we go to Emily Martinez. Michigan State issued an apology on Saturday night after an image of Adolf Hitler appeared on the video board before the game. The image was part of a pregame trivia quiz that asked Hitler's place of birth. Later that day, Michigan State issued a statement saying that a third-party company was the one putting content and they will no longer be working with them. Athletic director Alan Holler said the whole video wasn't viewed and an involved employee was identified and has been suspended with a university investigation. 
Ohio won off a one-play conversion, giving the Nittany Lions their first loss of the season. Ohio star QB Marvin Harrison Jr. led the team to victory with the career high of 11 passes for 162 yards and a touchdown. Ohio's defense held Penn State to 116 on third downs until Lions finally converted a third in the fourth quarter. The next game for the Buckeyes is against Wisconsin and the Lions will play Indiana. Texas star quarterback Quinn Edwards suffered a shoulder injury in the third quarter against the Houston Longhorns. According to ESPN's Pete Damel, Ewers was diagnosed with an AC joint sprain on his throwing shoulder. There was no timeline on how long the sophomore QB will be out, but is expected to be a few weeks. Texas head coach Steve Sarkisian said Malik Murphy will step in as the starting QB on their next game against BYU. That's all I have for college football. Back to you at the desk. 17-year-old Mark Yu made his dream debut for FC Barcelona with 10 minutes left on the match. After only 23 seconds on the pitch and the game tied at zero, the young striker made a run and fearlessly finished on goal to give Barca the lead that secured the home victory. Nothing could have gone better for the newest first squad member that arrives from La Masia, the famous Barcelona's Young Player Academy, which brought up players like Messi, Pedri, and most recently, Lamin Yamal, and now Marc Yu. The Blaugranas remain third in La Liga, just one point behind rival Real Madrid. But they will have to focus in their midweek match as they host Shakhtar Donetsk on Wednesday in the Champions League. At the head of the Charles, Soren Kazik set a new course record in the Champions single with a time of 16.57. Despite Saturday's rainy weather, Kazik, along with 14 others, set new records in events. The day's events included club singles, alumni crews, masters, and champion entries. As for the 2024 Olympics, Soren will race on the U.S. senior national team in a double with Ben Davidson. Thanks for watching WEBN Sports. I'm Max Lasky. And I'm Sergio Nogueira. Have a good night.